please join me in welcoming Chandar Patabiram. I want to start this presentation, get it off the right foot. I want to kick it off with these Nike shoes. These Nike Pegasus shoes that I was inspired to buy recently after seeing a lot of the Nike messaging. Anybody seen the ad for this Nike, specific this Nike Pegasus shoe that talks about lightest shoe, ultra fast technology, great technology, etc. Anybody seen the ad for the specific shoe? Okay. Good answer, because that was a trick question. There is no Nike ad for the shoe, right? Because Nike doesn't sell us a shoe. They sell us an emotion, right? They don't market features to us. They market feelings to us. They inspire us through the feelings. And examples of that, as we have seen, is they inspire us by showcasing Colin Kaepernick they inspired us, inspired us to believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. They inspire us by showcasing Serena Williams and say that it's okay to dream. If they say your dreams are crazy, we can showcase how great dreams are. So again, it's the feeling. And what Nike has figured out, that the key to winning, the key to winning in business and society is you have to capture the heart to win the mind. So whether you're in B to B or B to C, it's really we're human first. It's B to H. We're all human first, and we connect with some with how we feel about something much earlier than what we think about it, right? And if you think about this, for centuries ago, centuries ago, the Greeks had actually figured this out, and they had figured it out with their three-part structure on ethos, pathos, and logos in that order. Ethos, credibility, pathos, emotion, and then logos, logic. And they figured it out, and that's what a great story does, is really bring together how you can capture the heart to win the mind by using this emotion. And the great storytellers, the great storytellers we know about, have used this emotion as a weapon of mass influence to capture the heart. A great example of that is Martin Luther King Jr. Now, we all know what an inspiring leader he was. And probably the greatest, one of the greatest speeches of all time is the speech he gave that inspired a whole moment. But what he said, he said, I have a dream. What he did not say is, I have a strategic plan. Think about it. If he had said, I have a strategic plan, it gets us here. He was selling us a dream. He was not selling us a plan. And that's really key in terms of how do we capture the heart for us to tell great stories. Now, it also turns out that why storytelling is important is because when we share information that does not have stories attached to it, it turns out that we remember a lot less of it. Matthew Lund, one of the great storytellers from Pixar, says that when you share stats without a story, after 10 minutes, you only retain 5% of it. So hopefully you retain this data point that you will not remember data points if there is no story attached to it, right? And I can tell you personally in my case, I've experienced this too. If there's not a story, I don't remember it. It's not epic and memorable. So in the case of for me, for example, let's just talk about this. Let's talk about child adoption in the United States. Anybody in the audience here has adopted a child? Yes, sir, one, one here. The data. The data that hits me here says there's 115,353 child adoptions in the United States. Does it do anything to me here? No. It hits me here. But behind those 153,353 child adoptions are unique, personal, engaging, life-changing stories that we remember. And in my case, it so happens that a good friend of ours adopted a kid just like you, sir. And they told me the story, the challenges they went through, the turbulence that they had, and how they overcame this to get the child, who is now in 11th grade in Saratoga High, and how they go to Europe and get this. I have forgotten the date, the time, the data, everything about the story. But I guarantee you, I haven't forgotten the essence of the story and the challenge of that story. And that's what it really is. If you tell a story, 
is much more compelling than just telling statistics on anything else. So now I've made the case of why we should, should tell stories. Great. How do we go tell great stories? So how do we tell a story? Now, one place that we can learn from on how to tell a great story is from the movies. Now, on one hand, yes, movies are a willing full suspension of disbelief. On the other hand, movies are a great epicenter of emotion that we can learn from, that I talked about, that to capture, to capture the heart, to win the mind. Now, everybody in this room is either an engineer today or was an engineer. So rather than giving you some esoteric kind of a speech, I thought I'd give you a framework based of thinking. How can we use a framework way of leveraging the movies to tell stories? And let's go operationalize that. So I'm going to give you three C's, not just because my name begins with a C, but I'm going to give you three C's on how to tell great stories. So we use the movies, and then we'll come back to B2B, and we'll see how we can use the same framework in our B2B storytelling. The first C of any great movie is characters. Let's watch. That's great. There are some great characters here. So the first thing is about the characters. In every great story we know, there are heroes, there are villains, and then there are guides and other characters. So the first part is understanding the characters in the story. The second C is the most important C of any story, and that is conflict. Let's watch. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Father to a murdered son. Husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. He told me you killed him. No, I am your father. It's great, you have to end with Shirley, obviously. Great conflict, but that is the key in any story. The conflict is what makes a story. And the conflict is just not in war. It's in love, it's in everything, it's in B2B, I'll talk about that. And that's really about what's at stake, what's the tension. Because without a conflict, you just have events. You don't have stories. A great quote on that is by the person who wrote Tinker Taylor's Soldier Spy. The cat sat on a mat is an event. It's not a story. The cat sat on the dog's mat <laughs> is conflict. And that's part of the story. And that's really, really important for us to understand as we go is how do we realize and how do we amplify the conflict that really creates the engagement and, and the interest in people when we tell stories. And I'll actually explain it in a context outside of the movies. So we've got the characters, we've got conflict. And the third part is as you amplify the conflict, the third C, which is change. Let's watch. Shawshank Redemption, one of the great movies. But that's change. It's change for the new, change for the better. What's the new? What's the better? What's the growth? And every movie capstones it with after the conflict that has changed for the positive, or we used to call it happily ever after, right? So those three things, when it comes to great storytellers and great storytelling, 
is about starting introducing the characters, amplifying the conflict, and showcasing the positive change that happens that ultimately captures the heart. Now, at this time, I'm sure all of you are thinking about this and saying, that's great, Chandar. You just told a story of how to tell stories using movies. How does it apply to our daily lives every day in B2B when we go back to respective jobs and we have to tell stories whether to raise money or talk about our customers, our product, whatever it is, right? So let's take this three-part framework and operationalize this in a B2B context. So I'm going to tell the story of how we at Cooper tell our customer stories. I know that it's probably not relevant. The story itself is not relevant to you on our customers. But the example of how we operationalize this framework is what I like to take away and how do we go do this, right? So just 20 seconds on Cooper here is that, you know, we are a spend management, the world's largest spend business spend management company. So what Salesforce does to sales, what Salesforce is to CRM is what we do to spend, to business spend management, two ends of the spectrum. Every company makes money, every company spends money. And we have more than 2,000, thousands and thousands of customers where we are maximizing the value of every dollar they spend today, more than $4 trillion of spend that we manage for companies. So that's about us. But the story I'm going to tell you is how do we then take this framework and applying it to our customer storytelling? And to do that, let's use AstraZeneca, our customer, as an example, to inject this framework into that storytelling. So AstraZeneca, as we know, is an amazing company, you know, 40,000 plus employees. And their mission in life is to save lives and have scientists uh, to the betterment of life and save lives. And as we all know, they've done an amazing job in the pandemic in terms of saving many, many lives. So that's the kickoff of the story. Now, I'll start with the middle C, the conflict. I said the conflict is the most important part of every story. The conflict, before they started using Cooper, this is how I'm telling the story, the conflict was between science and spend for them. The Gabbar Singh of the story was the shackled legacy systems and processes that they had. So scientists were not being the stewards of science, but shackled by the silo systems and processes they had. And as a result, the scientists were using a lot of things for what they needed to order. For example, when you spend money, you have to, for example, scientists, they have to order their lab, lab uh, PPE, their test tubes and supplies, and even when they do research with universities and stuff, they go through a procurement process for that. And that was being shackled by old legacy systems that caused a, too much time spent on that, and B, not enough adoption. So that's the conflict in the story, right? And then we said, okay, how do we go address this conflict? The characters in the story are these three people who came together as Team United, the Triangle of Trust, who drive digital transformation in their organization to fix it. Now, a key point here, folks, when you tell the story of your product or your company, or whatever you're doing in terms of that, remember, the customer is always the hero in the story. It's not you. It's not your product. It's not you what you guys did, right? You can be Yoda, but you're not Luke. And many times, the product that we use or that we offer are the Yodas that guide. Cooper is the guide in the story. We're not the hero. The heroes are the customers. Keep that framework in mind as you tell the story. And they came together, and in this case, the conflict, to address the conflicts, they drove digital transformation to simplify the lives of these scientists by using Cooper to provide the most simplest user experience for them to order something. Everything that they needed to order, maximize adoptions across thousands of scientists, and at the same time, driving back office efficiency to get visibility and control of all their back office systems. So it's simplicity and efficiency driving digital transformation of, of their back office functions. And in their company, the back office came to the forefront in terms of this change. So then let's apply this framework one step further. So we got the conflict, science versus spend. We got the characters that I just talked about, these heroes. And the guide was, in this case, us and our technology. And then there is the change. And there's two kinds of change. The empirical change is going from doubling the structured spend, in this case, again, I'm going inside our domain here, but they were spending 50%, they doubled their structured spend, meaning spend that is going through their systems as opposed to rogue spend. And they've got visibility and control of more than $10 billion of, of spend. Now that's not relevant to us, but that's the change, the framework. But that's just the empirical change. Capturing the heart to win the mind 
is the real change we talk about in this case is how scientists are scaling not just to save money but to save lives and, and that is the emotive change that scientists become the steward of science after this initiative than just you know being shackled by process so you can take that framework of the three c's and you can apply it to any one of these things that i talked about understanding the characters introducing it at the right place high amplifying the conflict and at the end of the day showcasing the change and when we do that, in whatever story that we say, we really make it powerful. And I'll tell you one more thing. The story of self is the most powerful thing. When you bring your own personalized stories into any scenario, that makes it that much more powerful and that much more connected, that much more authentic, right? We talk about AI being artificial intelligence, but AI also is authentic interactions. And how do you be authentic and you bring the story of self and you use this framework? You'll be well on your way to capture the heart, to win the mind. And that is my story of the day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.